look at this blouse it's got a beautiful square neckline this one has a collar in between but you can make a simple version there are lots of options for you to make something a bit more simple and still enjoy that square neckline we're gonna go over several patterns that have a square neckline woven and also a tutorial for you how you can sew on a really really neat looking square neckline using a facing stay with me hi sewing friends i'm karina from liftingpinsandneedles.com welcome to this channel that is all about sewing limitless sewing and today is about sewing square necklines make sure you are subscribed to this channel because in every video i work really hard to bring you really helpful content practical content that you can use for your own sewing in this case square necklines i'm excited to try some of these foggy glasses <laughs> at the end i have a question for you maybe a few of you could help me if you live in europe at the end whenever i want to share with you a group of patterns i have a little bit of a criteria going on it's mainly patterns that i already own that means i've already been into the file and looked at the sewing construction and the quality of the details brands that i trust and some that i have already sewn so you rarely see me mention or recommend patterns i haven't sewn or had a good look inside maybe you have sewn a square neckline before maybe you haven't in the case that you have, maybe you've had issues with it and it hasn't turned out super neat or maybe it's been amazing. <laughs> I'd love to know what your experience with square necklines has been. I love them. I think they look really pretty. I think they are totally different to a V or to a rounded neckline. Out of these 12 patterns, there are seven that have a traditional square neckline, meaning that the shape is like this. It's a square. There are other ways that you can achieve a square neckline look but with more complex sewing techniques, or maybe not complex, but just totally different. You'll see what I mean when I start mentioning them to you. I am going to mention them in a type of order. I'll mention the ones that are more simple to sew first. I think if you are newer to sewing, these would be really easy for you to grab and try out and have an amazing result with. They have a square neckline finish with a facing inside. They all have a very, very similar construction method. Little bits and bobs might vary, like seam allowances, you know, little things. But in essence, the technique would sort of be the same. I think one of the easiest to sew is a square neck top from Friday Pattern Company. It doesn't have setting sleeves, it's just like a drop shoulder or dolman type of sleeve. If you are sewing an A or B cup, you don't have a bust dart, but if you choose the C and D cup size, there is a little dart there. There are pattern pieces for you to be able to sew this either for a knit or a woven so you have those options i think that's really cool and you can sew that with a facing you can sew a facing like this with a neat fabric that is nice and stable you just have to be more careful use the proper interfacing and hand based a lot i really won't dive into the topic of neat facings here because that's not the goal <laughs> i've prepared for you a sewing segment based on the woven sewing of a facing not that you can't do it i'm just not going to dive deep into that that's a nice pattern that i have and i've looked at it the only thing i do different there is maybe lengthen it a little bit because it seems a little bit short for me then you have the fern top from pattern scout i've had this pattern since it was released in 2019 <laughs> i've tried to make it so many times i really love the style the original pattern had a rounded neckline and it's got princess seams that come from the shoulder there's a bodice or a waist seam and then a peplum with pleats. I think that's really cute and would look really nice on a lot of people. Then there was an expansion pack that was released that includes a V neckline and a square neckline. And they are all finished with facings. I've looked at the instructions and it seems pretty straightforward. Very similar to what I'm going to show you. So that is a nice one that you can try. Then there's a brand new salt whistle from Love Notions. This is a pattern that was released today, Tuesday the 19th. I am one day behind in my video schedule because I was very well on track with all my filming, but I found out once I was transferring files to the computer that there were quite a few clips that were corrupted. The SD card was just wonky and yeah, I had to film a lot again. Lovely, right? <laughs> So I am coming a little bit behind with the new pattern release but what you are going to see me sew today is the neckline of the salt whistle from Love Notions. It's a really pretty pattern, super super cute, it has a bodice, a waist seam, there's a bust dart there for the full bust option and you can sew either a peplum or a skirt and there's a scalloped edge at the bottom which I think is super cute, comfy, elasticated waist and sleeve options. So in the sewing segment, what you are going to see is me sewing 
this neckline. Go and have a look at my affiliate link if you would like to get this pattern already. It is on sale for the first week of its release. <laughs> you might already know that the pattern is already up and live and people commenting about it on the Love Notions sewing support group. This pattern was designed by Kira from Island Socialist in collaboration with Tammy. So it's her vision and it's really cute, really beautiful. I can't wait to show you mine. I've made two. But you'll see that in a few more hours, you know. So the salt whistle has a really nice facing inside. Really straightforward. You can do it for sure. And then what I'm wearing now is the Aisling blouse from Jennifer Lauren. Now this one can be as simple or as complex as you want it to be. I made it the more complex it could be <laughs> because I made it for a so long. I do monthly on Patreon. So this one has the collar sort of in between the facings and the button down feature. But you can cut this pattern with the front on the fold without a collar and then you just have a really nice well-fitting top with darts and a facing inside. So it can be really, really simple if you want it to be. And I've wanted to make it for ages. I've got it printed out and everything because it fits so nicely. It's got cup sizes, so it's a really nice woven top with a square neckline that I've wanted to make. Just nice and loose, you know, nice fit up here, but then roomy at the waist and hips. Which is what a lot of us want to wear when we want to be comfortable, right? <laughs> so that is a nice one. And then I have a pattern in my collection called the Robin Top from Style Arc. I love this one and this is one that I would make with uh, something a bit more structured like a chambray or even a linen because, it, because it's a design that's fitted, it's got a lot of darts at the bust and the waist so it's something you would wear maybe with a skirt that has a lot more volume or wide leg pants. It's got a square neckline on the front and the back <laughs> finished with facings. So this one takes it a step above in the complexity just because there's an invisible zipper in the center back. It is a fitted design, so you do need that to get in and out. But it's lovely, lovely. I'm, as you can see, I'm going up in the complexity of these patterns. Not that they're complex, they're just not as simple as the ones I have previously mentioned. Now, another one that is a little bit more complex and has a nice square neckline. I've already sewn one in a muslin version uh, for a pattern test. Is the Pauline from Closet Core. Now this one has different options for for the skirt and the sleeves. There's quite a lot of views that you can choose from, but the main feature that all these options have is a square neckline. It's a little bit different though because right here on the corner there's like a dart right here. It's part of the way that the bust is drafted. It's sort of empire because it's curved and has a few pleats down here. It's really pretty. But this one is more advanced because it's got a type of lining burrito method inside. It is finished really neat and clean inside. It's a really, really nice one that I really want to make for real because I've just made a muslin. In my context, I'm talking about the fitted skirt, not the voluminous one with the gathers. That, that's not my style. And it's not really, really deep or wide that, you know, you'd show your bra strap. So that's something that you need to look at when you see square neckline tops, see how it fits on other people because some are drafted really wide, not like this one, not like the salt whistle, the salt whistle is perfect. It's like similar to this one in the depth where you can wear your bra and you'll be perfectly fine. Another one that has a square neckline option is the Upton dress from Cashmere Patterns. The original pattern did not have a square neckline but they released an expansion pack has a lot of options for bodices we can mix and match features and skirts and sleeves and one of the options there is a square neckline but this one is not finished with facings these are fully lined bodices so the techniques are totally different and not hard but a little bit more time intensive a little bit more fine you know but doable <laughs> Those are seven patterns that I own in my collection, that I've looked at, that I like, that I love to sew, that I'm happy with the quality and the construction method, all of that. Let's hop into the practical business here. <laughs> Let's see how to sew one. One of the most simple ones. Let's see how to sew a square neckline that is finished with a facing inside. I am replacing stay stitching with interfacing and it's got to do with my fabric choice. I do mention that in the tutorial. Based on the salt we saw but with my twist in there as well. So let's see how to sew a square neckline and you will see my finished sew we saw top and dress in the next video. Let's hop into the sewing. These are the main common pieces that we're gonna be focusing on. This could be applied for any pattern. This is a bodice that hits the waist. 
but this could be perfectly just a top that's longer what's important is the neckline and here we have the front with the square shape right there instead of stay stitching that to stabilize it I have used a little piece of interfacing and I'll show you in a sec how I did that I did the same with the back right there you can see the black I'm stabilizing the square neckline opening with a strip of interfacing it's just very very lightweight non stretch as you can see I've kept the pattern piece there so I can know that this is the correct shape and that nothing is getting bended or distorted this is rayon it could sort of turn out a different shape if you're not careful after doing the first side then I flip it to the other side I don't have the pattern piece anymore but the side that I already interfaced is sort of my template this is how it looks it's really neat this won't be seen it will all be hidden inside and it's gonna keep this area super stable without stretching out and distorting this is the back neckline and I did the exact same thing I just took a little bit of interfacing and stabilized it there with the help of the pattern piece as a template this is what I'm doing instead of stay stitching and here we have our facing pieces. Square shape right there, rounded shape on the back, and I'll show you how I block fuse that. I'm cutting out the facings for the square neckline. This is the front neckline. I have a piece that's a little larger than my pattern piece. This fabric has already been interfaced, so as usual, I'm block fusing. Rayon, when it's interfaced, does turn out pretty stable. It means I can just place the pattern piece and not use pins. With the corners, I don't wanna go right in there with the blade because I don't wanna cut past the corner so I'm purposely leaving a tiny little bit there uncut and at the end I'm gonna cut with my snipper just into those corners here you can see the back facing I have already interfaced that now the pattern pieces came like this, placed on the fold. I just created whole pieces so that I was able to cut it like that. I find it more accurate that way. And the same for the back. So that's how the pattern piece was. I just added more paper and created a whole piece. This particular pattern has a bust start. I have already sewn that. Just to make things easier, I have already surged the edges of the shoulders, the side seams. I've already done some prep work. But in this episode, we're mainly focusing on the neckline. So we're going to put the front and the back pieces right sides together and align them at the shoulder seams right there. We are going to sew those together. In this case, I'm using a 3-8 seam allowance, just a straight stitch. I had already surged the edges here for both, so I'm planning to press seams open. I just think it's less bulky that way. But if I was working with a lighter weight fabric, I could serge it together. In the same way that we did the shoulder seams of the main pieces, we're gonna do the same with the facing pieces. Just put them right sides together and align them here at these little short seams, sewing them with a straight stitch. I also plan to press the seam open. You can see that for the facings, I have also surged these separately. The seam pressed open will lie against the seam of the bodice. And now I want to surge all the edges of the facing all the way around so that they're super neat. Here in these corners, I don't just want to snip that because then this can start unraveling the serger thread. So I can see my two regular threads from the two needles, not the woolly nylon from the loopers, and I'm just going to pull them out. These come out pretty easily. I can just do a few knots here and it'll be super neat, non-bulky and safe. Nothing's going to come undone later. So that's how I'm finishing these corners. I've been to the iron and I've pressed the shoulder seams open right there for the bodice. I've done the same with the facing pieces right there and I've got it extended. This is the front where the square shape is and then the rounded bit on the back. All we do is take the facing and put it on top. They have the same shape so I'll take my time to pin everything and align it nicely and then we can sew them together. Okay so I've taken the time to pin the facing on. This fabric is rayon. It is a little slippery when these two layers are touching so I'm going to take a minute to hand baste and then I'm going to be sure it's not going to slide. I don't want to just rush over these corners. I want it to turn out super neat. 
So I've just got a thread and a needle here and I'm going to be basting about a quarter of an inch from the edge. That ensures that the edges stay together nice and neat but I'm going to be sewing at 3 8 so I won't be sewing on top of the basting and then it'll just be easy to whip it out once I've sewn this. That I'll just go around, it won't take much time at all. This is totally optional, I just think in the long run it just makes it easier. The next few clips follow the same process, it's just another garment but it's the exact same neckline. <laughs> This is a crepe, it's a little bit slippery when these are together and I wasn't going to trust the pins. Same process I would do with the blue rayon version you were seeing previously, I did the exact same thing. So instead of using all the pins to sew, I just hand basted that. I've drawn a few dots here on the corners in the intersection of this 3 8 and that 3 8 so that I know exactly where to pivot. And I'll be sewing with a slightly smaller stitch length, especially in these pivot areas so that the corner is really crisp. You can see I've also got this version with interfacing to stabilize the neckline right there. And I have used white interfacing in this one. You can see when I'm sewing. I could have used black or white, but I think white is always nicer for tutorials. So we'll just go ahead and sew this. Okay, I'm very happy with how this turned out. Look, if I was working with cotton or linen, I probably won't hand baste this. I'll do it with the pins. But for this type of fabric, I think it's worth it. I think a square neckline is really noticeable if anything goes wonky. So just a little step to prevent. For this pattern, we're using 3 8 If we were using 5 8 or half an inch, you know, you could have different seam allowances in your patterns. I would trim away to reduce bulk. But I think 3 8 is okay. I don't mind having that amount of seam allowance inside. So now I'm just going to snip into these corners right here. Not through it, but close enough on both sides. For any facing, whether it's rounded or square, whatever shape, understitching is really important because it's going to keep the facing inside. What's really ugly is if you have a little bit of the facing showing. And even if you plan to top stitch for decoration purposes, understitching is functional because it's going to stitch the seam allowance in place there under the facing and when you flip it under it's going to make the seam roll to the inside by a little bit so that's what we want to do you can under stitch with the regular presser foot but i think doing it with the blind hem presser foot is really helpful because you can move the needle to the left and the needle goes into that orifice and then there's a little ridge there that will go against the seam so this gives you really professional results without trying too hard. You need to put your garment in this way where you have the bodice on the right hand, the facing on the left. Seam allowance always under the facing right there. And now we just guide that little ridge of the presser foot against the seam and under stitch. Here on the corner, you can still understitch, just make sure the seam allowances are underneath the facing and on the corner you don't get a pleat, so you would have to stitch right on the edge there. I'm here at the eye end tidying this up and I realized I forgot to snip at the back neckline because this is curved. On the front you have a straight shape, straight because it's a square, nothing curves, you don't really need to really snip uh, to relieve tension anywhere. But the back is curved and I'm still in time, <laughs> I can still snip. I've only sewn and understitched right on the edge so I still have plenty of seam allowance in here to relieve the tension from. So I can still get in here and do a little snip every 3 8 or so. It's not too late. Better now than never. I usually do the snip before under stitching. That's when I would think it's more advisable. But if you forget, 
and in this case like I did you can still come in here and snip so now I can tell straight away that this curve I'm gonna be able to press it nicely um, there's no tension now it's nice and relaxed because those snips allow the seam allowance to open up like this inside if you can see right there so that's what the snips are for so while I have the facing nice and flat here on the ironing board I've been basting that facing down so on the front it's already basted and now keeping it like this and not moving anything I'm gonna baste around like that this is the secret to keeping the facing unchanged and not moving anywhere if I even pick this up and put my fingers underneath I have the risk of the fabric moving a little bit and then the facing might not turn out that great don't worry about catching this this fabric is really really thick I really can't catch it with my regular sewing needle so it's not like I'm gonna end up sewing this onto the ironing board I've just been at the iron pressing my facing towards the inside it looks really really neat the understitching is keeping the facing inside so it's not going to be seen I like the corners they're nice and crisp now I was planning to just tack this on the shoulders just on that edge there on both sides but actually this fabric is pretty floppy even when it's interfaced I don't really want to deal with it moving around inside so while this is flat here at the iron I hand basted it around the edges keeping it really flat like that and now I'm just going to go ahead and top stitch I'm going to sew from the wrong side doesn't make a difference with my sewing machine it looks the same and I'll just sew along the inner edge of the surged area right there keep it in place and that's going to fix it totally optional though if this was a cotton if this was a linen I wouldn't really feel the need to top stitch maybe with linen I would want to top stitch because it looks good if it was a solid it just looks pretty for this one I just think it's going to keep it in place I'm going to just be able to wear it and not think about that facing moving around inside this is the back part and you can see the top stitching that I did in black for the facing this is where I started and stopped and I didn't back tack because that would look really bulky and ugly especially since there's a light color there I'm gonna take these threads and just put them through a huge needle both threaded and just push it back then you just grab the threads from the bobbin both of them from the start and the stop and knot it easy peasy and it always makes the garment look much more refined you know visible back and forth stitching does not look good and now you can't tell where I started and stopped I also tried to baste the facing where I wasn't going to sew so now it's just super easy to just pull it out it takes a minute to sew on and then 10 seconds to pull out and it makes a huge difference look there's the corner there on the front very neat inside and the facing is not going to move anywhere I think the result here is very 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 pretty I'm very happy with this I can't wait to finish this and show you how it looks like finished don't run away from a nice square neckline it's very pretty it's a little different so I hope I've got you motivated and inspired to look for square necklines I think they're really pretty and look good on a lot of people now patterns 8 and 9 are different I also love them but they don't have the traditional facing it's just a different type of construction although when you look at it you see a square one of them is a chiribo. If you want to pronounce that in Spanish with a double R, I love it because it's ch chiripo. <laughs> chiripo, you know. It's got yolks. It's got front and back yolks in a double layer that have that square type of shape. And then you have gathers here on the front below that and then you can make it sleeveless or you can do like a flutter sleeve. The style would be amazing with drapey wovens. This was a pattern that was released in 2018. At the time, I was not able to be a pattern tester, but I've wanted to make it ever since. I think it's really pretty. And I love that square type of neckline. It's nice and high. You're not showing anything. I think it's pretty. Another pattern that has a square look, but totally different, is the Kata dress from Seamwork. I also have it. 
and you can see that there's like mitered corners here on the inside it's got a number of facings that have those shapes so it's totally different it looks a little bit fiddly but it looks really nice i think in a solid in a linen it would look amazing the next three patterns have a square neckline look but they are patterns that are basically like camis because the way that it looks like a square is because you have a straight edge here and then a wide strap or maybe sometimes it's not that wide but instead of having a kami with a rounded neckline or a V, it's just square across the top. And one of those is a Reynolds dress from Helen's Closet. That one can be a top or a dress. Lots of options. It's got a facing inside. But it's basically just straight with a big strap there that covers your bra. Totally different sewing technique. I don't find those types of patterns hard to sew. I have quite a few videos on the channel showing you how to put these types of patterns together. And whether your neckline is a V, rounded or straight across, the technique to insert the strap is the same. So that's one thing you could consider if you like to have that square look, but you don't want to deal with the typical facing. I think this is not hard, it's just totally different. Something similar would be the low-key kami from Pattern Emporium. This past summer, I made two, the rounded neckline and the V neckline. I just didn't make the option, I had it straight across which would give it that square neckline look. So that is another option. I do have a video on the channel showing you how to put all that together. It's, it's really, really fun. And then the other one I have already made is the Wide Strap Maxi from Peppermint Magazine. These are the free patterns that you can get from the website by just typing in your email. I will show you the liner. It is supposed to be a maxi, but <laughs> you might know that I do not wear maxi dresses at all. For real, I just cannot. So the ones I made were tops. Just cut them shorter easy peasy I love that one it's really really interesting to put together also really fun it's got a bit of gathering on the back straight across and at the front is straight with the white strap so when you look at it from the front it's a square neckline <laughs> just different I hope that was fun to watch and I hope it can motivate you and just see how fun and easy a square neckline could be. Maybe you've never sewn one because you think it's harder than a rounded neckline. I really don't think it's much harder other than a few corners and a few extra snips. It can turn out super pretty. I think stabilizing the neckline is really, really important. Now when you flip your facing to the inside, don't do it like I did it where I snipped sort of sneakily when I was pressing. You can snip the back neckline before you understitch. That would be the correct way to do it. But I am human after all. And the fact that I was filming again sort of got my mind a little bit, you know, in another headspace. I hope this episode gave you ideas and it was helpful to see the technique. Okay, I said I was going to ask you a question at the end because I just don't want to mix it in with the sewing content. But this is sort of sewing related. My husband right now is in Salzburg, Austria, and then next week he's going to be in Vienna, Austria. I don't know German. <laughs> if you are from around that area, if you know German, if you could email me some addresses, like really clear street number and names of fabric shops in those cities, I would be so grateful because my husband always brings me fabric souvenirs from all his trips. And that's how I've been collecting fabric from a lot of places I never get to go to. So I'd really love to get some fabric from Austria. <laughs> I know this is a long shot and maybe there's no one from Austria that watches this channel. But you never know. <laughs> I'd love that if you're able to help me. Just email me at liftingpinsandneedles at gmail.com and I would be so, so grateful. I mean, my husband's expecting to go to some fabric shop. He just We just don't know how to find them or how to look for them, you know. Thank you so much. That was all. I'll see you again very soon with the video all about the salt we saw from Love Notions. It's already on sale, as I said. Make sure you check out my affiliate link and use my code Karina10 at checkout for an extra 10% off. And that's all from me. I'll see you again very soon. Can I do